Hi, and welcome to another episode of Sustainment TV. I'm your host, David McDonald, and today's video is going to be another installment into my recently started artist series. But before we get into the video, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. It really will help the channel grow and improve upon what I do. Without further delay, let's get right into it. I recently had a chance to get in contact with another good friend of mine that I used to work with a few years back. He's a freelance trumpet player based out of the Nashville area. He's also a Grammy-nominated songwriter. Hope you enjoyed today's video interview with Tyler Yeager. All right, ladies and gentlemen, as promised, we have Tyler Yeager. What's going on, man? How you doing? Hey, good, brother. How you doing, man? Hey, doing well. Introduce yourself for everyone. Tell them who you are. Okay. Uh, my name is Tyler Yeager. Uh, I'm a freelance trumpet player uh, here in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm a member right now of the 101st Airborne Division Band. Um, uh, Mac and I go back, it was 2014. I think it's when I joined the band at Tradoc, and we were there together, and I was actually my first line supervisor, uh, and I was an E4 then, and I'm still an E4 now. It's so uh, it's been great um, doing a lot of session work here in town, doing a lot of live work on the road with a lot of guys, um, a lot of Grammy nominations, uh, an actual Grammy, and so yeah, life is good right now. Life's real good. Good stuff, man. Um... Who inspires you to be a musician in the, in the very beginning? Who was your inspiration, man? Uh, for me, it was my father. Um, my dad was a singer and drummer for many years in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, and uh, played with a show band that did, it was five guys that did 55 different instruments. And so they would do this like almost like a carnival act. And so he had these VHS tapes, if anybody even knows what a VHS is, you know, right. hopefully everybody, yeah. Uh, tapes of him playing and uh, so we would watch that and that just seemed like something I wanted to do it just seemed so amazing so my dad uh, was my big first inspiration and then, uh, we have a whole lineage of musicians my brother my uncle my grandmother great-grandmother we've all been musicians I guess that kind of tells us what we're going to do for the rest of our life but um, yeah it was my father that kind of really set the precedence for me all right all right um with you having been around music so long, I'm sure you have a certain, you know, process that you like to do, go through or whatnot in terms of warming up and all. But I mm -hmm. guess on the tapping into your creative side, I mean, what is your, what is your creative process actually like? Um, well, if I'm getting hired to either arrange or maybe getting hired to do some lyrics or getting hired to do, um, you know, more of a creative job. I always ask first, what's the emotion that we're wanting to get out? What's, what's the draw going to be? Um, you know, of course, if somebody tells me I, I want to have the next big mother and son dance at every wedding, you know, that tells you the emotion that you want to have. Um, you know, if somebody says I want an upbeat, intense jazz tune, I know what to go after at that point. Um, and that kind of correlates into when I'm in the studio setting, um, when, you know, you walk into the studio and there's 20 musicians there and they hand you the piece of paper, first question is always normally asked, what, what's the feel here? What do we want out of this? And that's kind of the first step that I take. Uh, and then I find out a little bit of history about the person uh, that we're writing for or what we're doing for or who I'm playing with, because that, that tells a story all in itself. Um, you know, with some of the musicians I've been able to work with, uh, their story will tell you exactly what's going through their head. Uh, and that makes it 10 times easier easier for you to write either lyrics or write um, tunes for them. You know, it's, that's usually the first couple steps I take. And then, you know, we start diving into the weeds with little detail things, you know, hooks and choruses and verses and things like that. Okay. Okay. Out of all the venues you've ever performed at, what's been your... What's been your favorite venue to uh, perform at? I think my favorite one that I ever, ever had, I, uh, I was with an artist named Delbert McClinton. And uh, it's going to sound crazy. We were in a casino in Lake Charles, Louisiana. And, Lake Charles. Probably you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. It was my first night with the band. Mm -hmm. And so I had all, no, yeah, it was my first or second night with the band. And just the, 
you know, he's he's gotten probably about 10, 15 Grammys. Uh, he's, uh, his band's just unbelievable. The members in the band are unbelievable. And uh, when we played that show, and I remember having to read it down, and the sax player I was playing with at the time, uh, he's incredible. I play with him a lot here in Nashville, too. And uh, just the, the crowd, you know this better than anybody. You go to a show, and everybody's there to see you play. That's what they want. They want to see the band play. Um, you know, when it, when you got 3000 people jam packed in this casino that are just there to live off of the ride we're creating, uh, it's a really cool feeling. And so that's probably my favorite venue I've done probably when I was with no BS, when I did that gig, when we played, um, with kid rock, that was a lot of fun. Um, that was out on a boat and we're just playing tunes and you've got EPMD You've got Robert Randolph, you've got No BS Horn Section, you've got Kid Rock, you've got all these amazing musicians up there, and we're all just playing on this boat. That was a great, great time. Um, I, yeah, but, you know, the other bigger venues, they feel good, but it feels like, you know, it's kind of like a, uh, almost like a corporate kind of thing. It's not really a home, you know, home feel, and when you're playing in those kind of places, it, it can feel like that. Um, but with the smaller venues that, you know, the fans that are paying the $35, $40 a ticket because that's all they got and they're coming to see you play. That's, that's normally the ones that are the best for me uh, when I'm playing. You got you a little more personal, a little more intimate. I can see that. Yeah. A little more intimate, you know, I can see that. All right. Um, in terms of, you know, coming into contact with a lot of people in the industry, what's been the best uh, musical advice you've been personally given? Oh, best advice I ever got, serve the music. No matter what you're doing, just play what the music is calling for. You know, you get a lot of the times you get into sessions, you know, they've already got it written out for you what they want. You know, and, uh, if you look at that piece of paper, it's a roadmap. That's that's essentially what it is. Yeah. Uh, when somebody says, you know, they've got this one line hook and they need me to write verses and choruses and all this stuff about it, you just look at that one line hook and you serve exactly what it's saying. You create a story around it. Um, but that was the best. That was, came from a trumpet player named Vinny Shashelsky here in Nashville, and he's one of the legends here in town. And when I first couple of sessions I did, he said, remember that always, just serve the music. You know, whether that be in a worship service or whether that be um, – you know, doing a rock and roll, big band, any kind of gig you could possibly do. Um, you just serve the music. So that's the best advice I've ever gotten and that I give to people. All right, all right. Um, I guess in reference to what we're dealing with right now, the pandemic, what kind of impact uh, has the current situation uh, had on your performance schedule? and your, your recording schedule, if, if you've done any this year or whatnot. I mean, what kind of impact yeah. has it had? Well, it eliminated the performance schedule. Uh, you know, we, I went from about 110 dates to about 30. Wow. Okay. Uh, matter of like three days. Yeah. And so it was just like, holy cow. But the recording situation, it kind of made me grow up a little bit uh, and start doing the in-home studio recordings. Um, I had been talking about doing that for a long time and wanted to do it. And a lot of, a lot of actually Virginia friends, um, Martin blocks and he got me hip to a lot of things. And uh, a lot of guys in town were talking about it. And so I just asked for advice and they came over and hooked up my computer and microphone and told me what to get, and what to do, how to do it. Um, and that went from eliminating all of my recording dates to bumping up to now where I'm probably on average two or three a week. Okay. Okay. just sitting at home, you know, which I'm, I can dig, but uh, it, it's a different kind of feel, but uh, the recording schedule picked up pretty heavily. Uh, the live gig is slowly coming back. I've got three or four dates for the rest of the month and then about six or seven in October. And so okay. that stuff, it's coming back. You know, everybody, I know it's so easy to be negative right now. Yeah. Yeah. You know, man, it's so easy to be negative and you know, a lot of them are right. You know, I mean, there's not a lot going on, but uh, if we look at it as it's coming back constantly and being prepared and ready to play and have a good time doing it, 
um, it's going to make it go a lot faster. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Now, many people may not know uh, of your songwriting um, prowess. Um, what What was your inspiration? You know, what got you into into writing songs? Was that something that happened by accident? Was it life experiences? I mean, what brought? Yeah. Uh, well, if you remember, I was going through a divorce um, with my ex-wife. And, uh, you know, when I was sitting in a therapy talking about it, the therapist says, well, you're a musician. You know, you're a creative kind of guy. You should write your feelings down. You know, you should try writing it down. And so I did. And, um, you know, I did a few, few of them. And a buddy of mine was like, you know, these aren't too bad. You know, can I, you know, I'm going to send this to somebody, you know, maybe maybe something come of it. And I was like, okay, you know, cool. You know, I've got nothing to lose. I'm not anybody in that kind of business. Um, and so uh, he sent it to a friend and I got a call from a company and they said, you know, we'd like for you to start working as a lyricist. Would you mind, would you mind coming in and doing a little bit of stuff? So sure. I, I would love to. And that just snowballed into different things here and there. Kept going and kept going. And, uh, you know, I, at the time I had a lot of time on my hands. <laughs> so sure. with uh, going through that. And so I had a lot of emotion, you know, I had a lot that I wanted to say uh, and putting it down on paper just felt great. Um, and it really led into, you know, composition when I'm writing charts and writing things like that, I'm able to express myself a lot more yeah. by starting the process of using words. Um, so yeah, that, uh, that kind of happened on accident. That wasn't a, I wasn't like the million people that try to, uh, you know, make it as a composer or a lyricist or any of that. I, you know, I just, it snowballed and I had a lot of friends in the right places. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, from being playing around the country so long. Um, so I was able to get hooked up with the right people right away. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, it's a great thing. I still do a little bit of it today. Not too much. Uh, you know, it, um, it was a fun ride. Uh, I keep doing, I keep writing all the time. That's why my office looks like a wreck most of the time. Uh, it's because I'm just writing constantly and trying to keep myself sane. And um, yeah, but that's how all that happened. It's, it's pretty awesome how, you know, something, um, something that initially was supposed to be therapeutic for you, I mean, kind of blossomed into something else. I mean, there are lots of people who say they have things on the inside that they just have problems, you know, you know, bringing life to it. And so that's pretty awesome how it started out as, started out here and it just grew into something that's, that's pretty awesome right and you know to add on to that you know a lot of people you know everybody expresses differently mm -hmm. you know some people express through playing their instrument uh, some people express by dance uh you know singing obviously writing just poetry or writing you know tunes or whatever it is or anything paints painting or you know there's all kinds of outlets you know fitness i mean you talk people talk about it all the time right well when you're frustrated you go work out you know it gets some of that uh, testosterone maybe down a little bit but it's the same with you know if you're feeling sad write about it you know come up with a song play a tune do something um you never know what it's going to create uh, and i think i'm a great example of that i had no clue what i was doing when i first started you know i was just I had an emotions i had a lot of emotions at the time and uh, wanted to get them you know so yeah, good stuff man um will you um will you be releasing a holiday album anytime in the future or is that something that's already happened or something that's due to happen uh probably not a holiday album uh you know i would love to tag on to kenny g because man that's a holiday album right there but um uh you know if i'm gonna do an album i want to come up with something fresh I want to come up with something new that's different or, you know, maybe a kickback to some of the older stuff that I really love. Um, you know, right now where we're all kind of clinging down and figuring out how we're going to make this whole thing work. A lot of musicians, you know, we just get together and just talk and, uh, you know, just catch up with each other, play. And uh, we started a band called the Music Row All-Stars okay. a while back. And it's a six horns kind of deal with rhythm section. And it's just stuff we normally don't get to play. Um, and when we started that, it was the intent to just have some fun, play some charts, you know, get make a little bit of money, but, you know, just have fun with it. Yeah. And that's going to probably be the next thing we start working on is getting that band uh, recorded out into the public. Because there are some amazing, amazing musicians in that band. 
Uh, and it's all Nashville guys. You know, we, we played on a Monday night uh, before all the COVID stuff started happening. We played a Monday night at a little small little club and that's just what we did. Um, and so, yeah, that would be the, that'll be the next release probably is the, the all stars. Okay. Okay. Now for people that are wanting to reach out to you, um, what's the easiest way to do that? Would it be Instagram? Do you have a website? Um, what's your, what's your contact information? Yeah. So if anybody wants to reach out about it, literally anything, uh, Facebook is always probably the easiest for me, James Tyler Yeager. Uh, there's a Tyler Yeager music page there on Facebook. You go through there. Instagram's fine too. Uh, reach out about anything. Want to pick brains, just talk, have a good time. Uh, That'd be the easiest way to get a hold of me. Okay, okay. You got any final thoughts, man? Uh, yeah, let's uh, let's love each other. You know, because man, that's this world needs that right now. You know, just yeah, uh, the music can take you places, but loving each other will take us across the world. You know, and just love your neighbor, love your love your friends, uh, love everybody because we're all the same. You know. We're all human beings, and uh, this world would be a better place if there was a little bit more love in it. Okay, man, that's well said. Well said. Um, hoping that you guys uh, are able to slowly and yet safely get back into you know a vibrant uh, performance schedule. I know that um, I was there. I was there in Nashville this past November. I'll definitely, uh, I'll definitely reach out next time I'm in the area. I right, mean, enjoy talking with you. Yeah, man. Thanks so much for having me on here, man. I'm glad I could. Uh, I love your channel and stuff. I watch it all the time. So I'm glad that we could uh, we could do this. And it's been too long since we saw each other anyways. So. Yeah, man. Yeah, don't be a stranger, man. I'll definitely, I'll definitely reach out and everything. All right, brother. Sounds good. Thanks so much. All right. Thanks, Tyler. All right. All right bye bye. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you have any comments or suggestions, or maybe you're an artist that would like to be featured as part of our artist series, please feel free to reach out to me. My contact information is here. And also Tyler's um, social media information is here. I'm sure he would love to hear from you. Once again, thanks for watching. Take care and we'll see you on the next one. Have a great day.